friends, it's me here, Jasmine at Linen Bouquet. I'm so excited that you're here today. I have a lot to share with you. Uh, it's been about two months now since I've shared my last What I'm Sewing. And so this is episode two of that series. And I plan to do this once a month because there's so much going on. I don't always post on Instagram what I'm currently working on or past projects that were more secretive. So um, I plan to do this once a month and just share and chat what I'm currently working on, not really teaching anything, just kind of chatting and enjoying the time together, talking about sewing and current projects and crafts and kind of how I'm doing with my progress on certain projects. So let me know if you have any questions um, and let's get started. So during the month of December, I was sewing quite a bit. Uh, I just didn't really share it much. I was super busy with the girls and the advent calendar that I was working on with them. We had, instead of giving them candies every day, I decided to go ahead and do an activity, which is fun and there's a lot less uh, sugar, but it's a lot of work. So I didn't get to do all these videos like I had planned, which is fine. I thoroughly enjoyed my Christmas holiday and the girls had a blast with every activity. But let me show you what I've been working on because some of those projects are still not done. So during the month of December, I had started working on this really sweet, it is called a Cozy Christmas Quilt Block and it also, I'm sorry, Cozy Christmas Quilt Pattern. And it also comes with um, an alternative table runner pattern. So I went ahead and made the table runner and I love how all of these fabrics came out, how they came together. And I like how they're showing on camera right now too. Uh, you can tell that I finished the top. There are four, or actually five blocks. There's three stars here. And I'm using mainly the Poppy Cotton uh, Cozy Up collection. There are three stars in this table runner. And I love the colors, it's soft pinks these really pretty light greens that I've kind of been obsessing over. I've actually been buying more and more of these um, within the past month or two of these green colors because I, I'm i loving the color. I'm using some in decorations throughout the house and now I'll be able to make things with it to put around the house. So really excited about that. But as you can tell, I haven't quilted it yet. I haven't even sandwiched it or found the, I haven't found the background or backing fabric for it yet so I still need to do that I wasn't in a rush um, and I can still do it I still have plans to finish this table runner this month for January because I uh, usually I end up starting Christmas projects way too late and then I don't get to use them during the holiday season and I put them away I don't want to put this away I want to complete this project with the rest of my works in progress but it's just so sweet I really enjoyed this pattern by Poppy Cotton if you haven't tried any of their patterns, I really love them. They're very sweet. They kind of have a farmhousey, cutesy vibe that I love. I love their blocks. You can see here that there is a stocking block with a present and a tree, a little tiny gingerbread house. Really, really sweet. And stars, quilt stars are classic, beautiful. So, and I went ahead and added a border of this gold gingham, which is a Riley Blake fabric. It's from one of the lines that came out a few years ago, and it's very shimmery, super, super shimmery. I've used it before. I've washed this type of fabric, and it holds pretty well, and thankfully, this will be a table runner, so there's not going to be too much, too much washing, and it's going to be in my daughter's room. So, I mentioned on Instagram that this is going to be on top of their dresser during the holiday season. So I'm not really gonna have to worry about washing it too often, but if I do, I know that the gold is going to be just fine. So I love this runner, it's very sweet. I added these darker uh, reds and greens in between to kind of break up the, the extra sweet colors, the, the pastel tones. So I've got this and I'm gonna finish it. Even though Christmas is gone and everyone's forgetting about it, I really want to continue and have these ready for the next Christmas season. So let me pin this up and I think, oh, here they are. I'm gonna pin them up behind me so that uh, they can show on display as I continue chatting with you guys. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that started Christmas projects and didn't finish, right? I'm pretty sure you have some. 
Let me know if you do, if you put them away, or if you're gonna continue sewing with them like I am. Here's another Christmas project I've been working on. This fabric line is called Warm Wishes Fabric. It's by Riley Blake. I just bought a little five inch square stack of it and I really liked it. I had a lot of fun slow stitching this season with this fabric. I used, I believe it's um, one inch, one inch hexes and I hand sewed them together. And for the one inch hexes, I can't really find them anywhere. So I went ahead and I downloaded a free outline uh, print, like a print page. So I downloaded that and then I cut them out out of the paper and used them uh, on cardstock. So a lot of prep, but they're super cute. And I got the most out of my five inch squares. I knew that I wasn't gonna get through an entire collection of this fabric. Um, even though it's super sweet, I did get a couple pieces of yardage, but this is enough. And so I think what I'm going to do with this, I had originally planned to make it big enough for a stocking. And then I realized I already have stockings. I can't have the whole house decorated in stockings of different styles and fabric collections. So I think I'm going to make this a tiny pillow because I really need some Christmas pillows and I love this fabric. You can kind of see that there's a little bit of embroidery. So like right here in that, that gray hexi, I added some uh, winter berries of embroidery. Uh, they're really simple. There's just three little berries in red and then some silver little leaves. You can kind of see it throughout. And I like it. I think it came out really cute. But I haven't done it. I haven't completed it yet, even though it's practically finished. All I need to do is add a backing for the pillow. It's a tiny uh, 10 inch square. And so super easy project. Why I haven't finished it is because I can't find the right fabric that I want to use for the back. I might end up using some of the yardage of this green print, but I was hoping to hold on to that. I don't know. I might just give in and use it anyway, but I love how this came out. Like I said, they're 10 inch hexes, or I'm sorry, one inch hexes in a 10 inch square. And I really enjoy this. So uh, it's all quilted, as you can see on the back, the embroidery, and then I, I just outlined the hexes on my sewing machine. Really simple, but I never I never actually posted the finish of this quilting on Instagram, so you guys get to see it first. And I'm gonna put this behind me also. I love, I love, love, love hand sewing because I don't like separating myself from the family too much. Uh, whenever I'm at my sewing machine, it's usually in the evening when everybody else is in bed. Whenever they're awake, the kids are awake, and my husband's out, I wanna be with them. So I like to sit there and interact with them. Uh, we like to play games, chat, watch movies. So I love to hand sew to get away from my machine and still be in the action with the family while, um, while getting some sewing done. It's just kind of really relaxing for me. So that's what I did in December, and I have a list here, otherwise I'll forget. Okay, the next thing is I have some updates to my stitching press, and I already put out a video about this, but I wanna let you guys know here also, just in case you missed it. So my original stitching press designs were about 11 by 13 uh, rectangles. And if you don't know, my stitching presses are these mini quilt ironing boards. And I say quilt because I originally um, used them for fabric piecing, chain piecing, and having it right next to my sewing machine, it's made it a lot easier to iron out those smaller pieces. Um, and once my, my quilt uh, blocks get large enough, I go ahead and move my project to the big ironing board. But I made some changes to this and I wanna let you guys know about it. So this uh, is my new stitching press design. It is now a 13 by 13 square. And so with that, there is a tiny bit of an increase in price. It's just materials really. And then uh, it's a little heavier. So there is more shipping that I need to account for and materials for shipping. So you might notice that there's been a little bit of an increase on my Etsy shop, but you get more ironing space. That's a whole, I believe 26 more inches to iron and it's a square. So it accommodates those quilt blocks really well now, since most of our quilt blocks do end up being around 12 inches. I love this, I love this uh, new idea. And really it came from a lot of feedback that I was getting and ideas, uh, questions that I was receiving from customers. So thank you guys, I love receiving your feedback. I love getting your questions. 
The only one I won't answer is how I made it, but any other questions, let me know. I'm happy to help. And so along with the updates, I also made the stitching press covers and these are awesome. I love it. It is a removable cover that you can put onto your stitching press and it does have a uh, material inside to help protect from heat. Also, in case you're worried about burning your stitching press or um, staining it in some way. And I love this for me personally, I use them for mostly FPP and EPP ironing. Whenever I am working on those small squares of FPP projects, I don't want any ink getting on my stitching press or my regular ironing board. So having a cover that I can easily take off and throw in the wash, it's been really helpful. So these are also now in the shop and I hope you'll go check that out. It's in my Etsy shop. Um, so yeah, that's one new thing that I was working on in December and this month of January. All right, and so now I'm gonna show you this really cute project that I finished. And these were actually Christmas gifts that I made for my daughters. So I went ahead and I made three of these fair and square bags. And the pattern is by Rosie Taylor, Rosie Taylor Crafts. And you can see how cute these are. The pattern was excellent. I made three of them. I thoroughly tested out the pattern and they all came out so cute. My daughters, I gave one each to my daughter. So Christmas morning, whenever they came out, they ran to the Christmas tree to see what was there from Santa. And they were surprised by this along with their Santa present and they were really excited. So that made me excited because as we know, when we sew, not everything's appreciated by people, but they loved them. They actually asked me to make them some new bags and they wanted bags for their um, Nintendo Switch, uh, Nintendo Switches, I guess they're called, uh, and their, their little games. So I thought this has a lot of compartments. This is gonna be perfect for them. So it has this uh, zipper here with a vinyl pocket that's see-through. It's got another pocket here. And then inside, and I will show you on this one here because those have toys inside. They've been using them all the time. Uh, but inside, it is fully lined and even the, the piping has directions on how to line that. And inside they have another pocket as well as a zipper. So a lot of storage, they really, really were excited about it. I'm really happy that they liked them. And I tried to pick fabrics that they would like. So you could see this one here has uh, these little leopards and tigers. They, my daughters are all about animals. So that's mostly what I buy. Uh, but you can see I used hexes here to hand sew them. I used so many super cute fabrics. It was really fun to dive into my fabric stash and not be, um, not have to stick to one fabric collection, but to pick many different prints from different collections and over the years, different manufacturers. And I love how they came out. I added the little charms here, you can see. And this one's really fun. Even the, the piping inside is scrappy. So. That was really cute. My daughter wanted a planner for Christmas and it fits perfectly. Another win. Uh, they can stuff all their horses inside and their dolls and their Nintendo Switches. So it worked out great and they were really, really happy. So you can see I have grays and the, this type of uh, red, this type of red and the greens and pinks, lots of colors. I had a lot of fun making these because I used some of my favorite, favorite prints. And then this one, of course, with the puppies, that Minky Kim fabric collection. I kind of went classic with the black and white here and I think it looks really cute. It almost looks like a bowling bag, you know, the style. And my daughter has her little dollies in here. Um, and I also am putting together a blog post with all the details and pictures. So I had a lot of fun making these and I was really happy to see that the girls liked them that they're using them the only bad thing is that uh, i put so much time into them that whenever they put them down on the floor or um are getting them a little dirty i'm kind of like oh, <laughs> i spent a lot of time on that take care of that bag so they don't they don't need me breathing down their neck about it i try to 
I try to hold back, but you can see I used a lot of pretty prints, a lot of different colors. This pattern is great. I already told Rosie that she did an excellent job. Um, and she added pictures in the pattern, which is really helpful for me. I always prefer pictures over uh, the drawn designs. That's just my style. But you can see the colors in here with the horsies and the yellows. I had a lot of fun making these, so happy to finally share them with you guys. And yes, this is the Fair and Square bag by Rosie, Cra Rosie Taylor Crafts. That is the name of the designer and her account, and you can find her on Etsy also. Any of the patterns that I'm, that I'm listing here, I'll also put in the description, just so you have it. And so I've mentioned before that I'm part of a quilt bee that I really love. It's a great group of ladies and I every with every month that they choose a quilt block I'm learning more and I'm honing in my sewing skills and getting better at corners and um, fabric pairings. So I of course I'm a little behind on my quilt bee. I think this is for the month of November but December I wasn't we weren't rushing and the whole group kind of decided, no, don't worry about it until January. So I went ahead and I finished my quilt B fabrics or my quilt B blocks. And these are Ohio star blocks and they came out really cute. Um, my, the quilt B, the quilt B queen requested that we use a 1930s prints and, uh, polka dots and tiny florals and tiny designs. So I got to use these. And while they're not really 1930s prints, I, I hope that they're um, going to be well received and that they're along with going along with the idea of what she wanted. So these are really cute. And I got to kind of mismatch colors because she just wanted something fun. So I got the light white and yellow and uh, the little aqua purple. I love this Tilda purple. It's a really good fabric. And Tilda always makes their fabrics so soft and they never shrink. The color's always really great. So I got to use a little bit of Tilda in this block. And then I believe this blue is from a Joanne print and I got it years ago. I, I don't even know who the designer is, but I really enjoy this one. And I got some poppy cotton in there with the pink uh, plaid and, and roses. It's really cute. So yeah, I also have these quilt blocks that I just finished and I need to get these in the mail and off to my quilt bee friend. And then let me see what else. Oh, right here. So I kind of hung these here and what I'm doing is I'm supposed to be a part of the, um, what's it called? The Smart Sofa Station Sew Along with uh, Allie at Arabesque Scissors. And she made this super beautiful pattern. It's so well written it's very well designed and I've been looking forward to making the sofa station but I've had the hardest time choosing what fabrics to use I think that the sofa station is so cute and I'm hoping that I'll be able to use it for a really long time so with that in mind I've been having a hard time picking the fabrics like it feels a little permanent even though it shouldn't be like if I don't like the colors I can make a new one right but um, I went ahead and I went into some of my favorite prints that I have here in my little my little cabinet and I pulled out these Riley Blake fabrics and I've got these by Citrus and Mint and I'll show you a little bit so uh, this is like a unicorn and princess print and then this is the Pemberley print that these are really hard to find I've been trying to find more and I can't and they're so special to me so I really do want to use them in this sofa station um, and also I have this other one from Pemberley actually quite a bit of these are quite a bit of these are Pemberley fabrics uh, from the Pemberley collection also by Citrus and Mint they're very sweet and I've had a hard time cutting into them and I think that's maybe why I'm not um, really settling on a fabric maybe because I don't want to cut into them you know sometimes you just have those fabrics that are so special and you know that if I if I use this I can't get it back so that's kind of what it's been like with these I just love them so much but the the greens are gorgeous so well done they're so pretty 
So I have Pemberley Fabrics and then I have this one by Art Gallery Fabrics. It's the, I think it's like a light pinky cream with these pink florals, like kind of a coral color. Those are really sweet and dark green. And I, I mentioned already that I have been loving, loving greens. Uh, this is a darker tone, still very pretty. I'm thinking of this, I'm thinking of using this as the binding for the sofa station. And then the main, and I'm taking it all down, and I, I told myself I wasn't gonna take it down, but it's kind of hard to see, kind of a distance back. Here's some Pretty Chambray by Tilda. They're excellent. And here, okay, I got it down. Here is this Riley Blake print that I've had maybe about two years now. It's gorgeous. It's not by Citrus and Mint. I don't remember who designed it, but it goes so well with her colors, with uh, Rachel's design colors. So I'm thinking these are gonna be the fabrics that I choose. And while I'm not completely set in stone, you may be seeing the finished sofa station with these prints, uh, but it, we'll see. I'm not committed to anything. Um, I really think they're beautiful. They're very sweet. Oh, I'll, I'll show you this one too. This is the, um, this is the dancers, the, the ball dancers from the same collection of Pemberley. They're very, they're very fancy. They're very fancy and, um, noble. <laughs> so really cute prints, but well, well, uh, I really want to jump into the, the sew along, but I'm also very indecisive with this specific project. And I think it's because it's so sweet that I'm kind of indecisive. So let's see, I think that might be everything that I've been working on. I think we're all caught up on what I've been sewing. I do want to share that I have a new tool that I'm adding to my Amazon must haves list. It is this, and I'm probably super late to the party, but um, while I was making my stitching presses, I was using some fabric markers that were not working and they were actually bleeding out into my stitching presses. Like even after I had finished the whole thing and wet them, pressed them, they were, the marker would not wash off and it would not disappear. So it wasn't really disappearing marker, it didn't work. So I was really happy to see this, it is so lined. They are so lined fabric pencils. They are awesome. They wash off great. I like that um, I can write with a pencil and it's not permanent and I can write, the, I can draw those thin lines that don't bleed. So I'm loving my sew line pencil. And I guess they're, I guess they're erasable, but I haven't had to use that yet. Um, usually they just kind of wipe off whenever I'm using uh, some water. But I love this sew line pencil, so I'm adding that to the list of must-haves. It's been amazing. And one last thing, which I think will be fun to add to these what I'm sewing videos, is something that's not even sewing related. And it's just a little bit of my personal like and what I've been enjoying that has nothing to do with fabric or in the sewing room. And I'm gonna share it with you. This is my little container of all natural uh, women's vitamins. And these are a multivitamin, they're called Gem. I have been using these for about six months now. I love them. I told a couple people about them, uh, but I don't generally go around telling people, um, you know, what vitamins or medicine they should use. But uh, with these, I've really enjoyed them. And being a mom of three, I have gone through the ups and downs of um, pregnancy, postpartum, um, I'm in my 30s now, so I feel like my body has been changing and adjusting to everything, maybe some hormonal uh, imbalances, but I was looking for something that I could use that actually made a difference. Um, most multivitamins, I use them for months and don't see any difference with my hair, with my energy levels, uh, with my skin, nothing. But I went ahead and I was looking for something that was more natural and I found this on Instagram, they're called Gem. They are all natural, they have a lot of excellent ingredients which I will share. And there's no plastics, it's not in pill form. 
It comes in this really cute, it comes with this little tin that I keep on the counter in the kitchen. It says bite me, which I think is fun. And uh, they, so it's a monthly subscription and I've been getting them for about six months now. And they're in these tiny little chewable, um, almost like a granola form. And I love knowing that I'm not ingesting plastics, that I'm taking something that's natural and earth grown. And this is an exaggeration. After just about 10 days of using these, I started noticing my energy levels were higher. I wasn't having to take a nap every afternoon or drink coffee all day to, to keep my energy levels up. I've actually really taken my, myself away from coffee, which I've tried to do in the past and never really stuck to uh, because I'm busy all day, especially being a homeschooler. Like you're not really supposed to stop in the middle of the day and take a nap, right? Uh, but that's what I was doing because my energy levels were so low. Uh, these have really helped me and I love the company. I love that they're uh, getting natural ingredients that are really that our body needs. And um, I just feel more comfortable with them. So I went ahead and I added a link to this uh, video, uh, to the description, and you can use that link. Uh, I believe you might get a discount on your first order um, since it is a referral link. And yeah, try these out. They're really great. They have immune booster vitamins, or I would call them chews, like little chewables. They have different flavors. I personally like the lemon, um, but yeah, I really like them. They have um, they have chewables for uh, relaxation, immunity boosters, uh, getting to sleep, anti anti anxiety. I just get the multivitamin so far, and like I said, I've loved it. So I hope you try them out, and I hope you had fun chatting with me about all that's been going on in my sewing room. Uh, if you have any questions or want to tell me what you've been sewing with, let me know. I'd love to hear your suggestions and see what you're up to. So make sure you give me a follow and a like, and I will see you next time.